I couldn't let go of a chance to actually testing out the pre-production unit of the Canon EOS R5 the other day, albeit it has been a crazy and a trying week for me. Now, without much deliberating, I took the camera out to the KL Bird Park and started using it like a kid given a new toy and trying to figure out this little quick review. Now, I've got to say that I didn't have a lot of testing done right and I'm hoping that I get another go with the camera when the actual production unit is made available. The videos recorded here are from the R5 at 4K 24 frames per second and 60 frames per second. Now most of the shots are done with C-Log and some were accidentally shot at its normal profile. It's a warm and humid day today. I'm drenched out in my own sweat over here. Here in KL Bird Park together with the 7200 and the R5, there's only one reason why I'm here in the Bird Park is to test out the animal autofocus on the R5. The way the animal autofocus works, it locks the tracking on the eye of the subject and continuously track on the movement. Well, I did not manage to nail a bird in flight though because I wasn't very quick. And that's no reason why I need to take so many frames of that photo. That's the 12 frames per second on the mechanical Shutter. Except to show off the mechanical shutter. That sounds wonderful. The one thing about cameras is that when it comes to tactile feeling, the joy of using the camera, the shutter plays an important role. Don't you think so? I really like the sound of the mechanical shutter on the R5. So you just lock onto the eye on the animal autofocus. Hi, high five. High five. Almost, huh? Almost, uh, almost you understand me, but you don't, right? If only Canon can speak bird language. And these are the 45 megapixel JPEG goodness directly from the camera. The raw converters is not readily available right now. More to test when the camera is released. Welcome back to Pataling Street. <laughs> I'm going for a coffee break before we continue the review. So we have tested the animal autofocus. How about autofocus for us human people? So if I come close, am I still in focus? Am I too close? And if I go far, and if I put my hands in front, and then out, so far so good. And if I were to bring my coffee cup close, and then away. So this is dual pixel autofocus Mark II. Here's my initial thought about the camera. The, uh, the autofocus is on point. For what it is, it is definitely a huge improvement from the EOS R to the R5. So there's a lot of small little quirks the EOS R has been fixed. Rightfully so, because uh, this is 18,000 ringgit, two, twice the price of an EOS R and it's two years senior than the EOS R. Now, if you use the EOS R before, how many times you are shooting with a viewfinder? Only to know that when you review it, it's in the viewfinder and not on at the back of the LCD. But in the R5, you could set it to display on the LCD, which is great. Small little quirks, but... It, Man, how many times you see a EOS R user walking around having their, viewfind, their eye on the viewfinder looking at settings and whatever. 45 megapixel raw and compressed. I always love how manufacturers give us like really good spec, uh, specs. Myself, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. So I go out and shoot and on the day out in, on the field, we come back with thousands and thousands of raw files. And 45 megapixel cameras is going to be heavy on hard disk for us. So whatever happened to the engineer that Canon has, that engineer the 5D Mark III, where they have medium raw and small raw in the camera settings. I think that's a brilliant idea. I would love it to be back in the menu so that we can select at least a medium raw. And here's a short sequence of videos that I was shooting at 4K 60 frames per second. I don't have CFAS with me, hence I couldn't test out the 120 frames per second or the 8K 120 frames per second. I want to test some more because I want to see how good of the low light performance of the R5. So 
there's still part of the video that I need to complete before I return the camera to Canon. So we are heading out for a midnight snack or rather my dinner and it's a good excuse for me to bring the camera out to shoot some night scene just outside my house. All right, we arrived. Have you guys seen Malaysian food trucks? So let me show you my country, my hood, this area uh, where there are food trucks galore around here, a couple of them. There too. So let's order some burgers. This is how I'm using the R5 uh, vlogging at night. So I'm on the TV mode right now, set on 1 over 50 and then uh, let the camera do the thinking and shoot these scenes over here. These are two of the same photographs taken with high ISO settings. Are these JPEGs still usable at these high ISO settings? And I can't thank Canon enough to allow me to uh, have a go on the R5 such an early day making these YouTube videos for you guys. Anyhow, this is what I thought. I must have said this earlier in the video, but the Canon R5 is certainly an update and upgrade to the EOS R. Whatever the small little quirks that you find in EOS R, the EOS R5 fixes it mostly. So let's address the elephant in the room. Does the camera overheat? Besides that, this was like in the news cycle, how great the camera is. The other part of the news cycle is how overheating the camera is. Yit hey yeah, very yit hey. At a very hot sun uh, when I was out there shooting in Pataling Street, it did overheat. My testing wasn't conclusive. For one, I don't have CFAS. For two, I was like in the middle of the sun, which, uh, which is a practical test, uh, which I botched because I didn't time it. I was out, I was shooting, I was just trying to enjoy the camera. The fact that when I was like going through the menu and it does say that, um, there is even an overheat control on the camera. In fact, Canon is trying to manage the, the heating issues on this camera from the get-go. So I don't think they are trying to hide anything. And in fact, they came up with a press release identifying what are the specification that will cause the camera to overheat. And I hope that the specification is on spec and hopefully the, the production camera perform towards that specification or better. It's year 2020 right now and what camera is out there that is under 5,000 US dollars, 18,000 ringgit that does 8K 120p, 4K 120p. The C300 Mark III is priced somewhere around 11,000 US dollars which is what, 45,000 ringgit Malaysia? The truth is, most of us that's gonna get the R5 wouldn't be using this as an 8K machine, we'll be using this as a photography camera or a 4K video camera. But there will be a Vincent Laforet of 2020, an outlier that does something amazing that I can't even imagine, that you can't even imagine because it doesn't exist yet. And I'm looking forward for that one amazing video out there. So when camera brands like Canon push out gears, put out specifications that challenge the physicality of the camera, to us consumer, we should be applauding their efforts in actually trying to push the limit, pushing the industry forward. Hey, I'm an eager fan of photography and videography just like you are watching this video. I also want this camera to work well. If you find yourself liking this video and you got informed, do click on the like button, thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe so that I am able to let you know when content like this is made available on my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe, as what people say. I'll see you guys on the next video. Can I just say that Ramli Burger or this kind of storefront burgers in Malaysia is the bomb. Oh, man. It's messy as hell, but mmm, so good.